At the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, government procured personal protective equipment, PPEs, for health workers and others who required it in their line of work. Questions have been raised about what went into the procurement of these gears. Minister for Health, Kwekwa Jumamin, was on the floor of the House to answer questions on the matter. Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Health requested for quotations from registered suppliers based on their areas of business. We then wrote to the Public Procurement Authority in accordance with Section 40 of Act 663 as amended to request for approval to use single source procedure to procure the various PPEs because of the emergency situation. Mr. Speaker, in situations where the threshold involved was above that of the Ministry's ETC, the Ministry then sought and received approval from the Central Tender Review Committee depending on the contract amount in accordance with the provisions of the Public Procurement Act 2003, Act 63, as amended. Mr. So, Speaker, with regard to the locally produced PPEs, the Minister of Trade and Industry pre-qualified local manufacturing companies in the garment industry and submitted the names of the firms to the Ministry of Health for their engagement. The Minister for Transport also answered questions on the Frontiers Healthcare Services deal for COVID-19 testing at the airports. Ghana Airport Company Limited strictly followed its established procedures in awarding concessions to our clients. The company sought and secured a, approval from the Public Procurement Authority before the award of the space to Frontiers Health Services Group was done. Mr. Speaker, Ghana Airport Company Limited is not privy to the contract between Frontier Health Services and the First Atlantic Bank for the purpose of collecting charges for COVID-19 tests at the airport. He also spoke about steps to regularize the activities of Magdan Aviation after initial challenges with the operation of a private jet terminal. Ghana Airport Company Limited has held a series of meetings with Magdan Aviation Handling Services Limited to resolve the instances of regulatory breaches. The party considered and agreed on the following why, Mr. Speaker, safety and security issues. A. Magdan Aviation to present safety management manual and airport security program to GSCR. B. GSCR to retrain Magdan Aviation staff under the directive of Ghana Civil Aviation Authority. The status of implementation, Mr. Speaker, Madame Aviation has submitted its safety management manual and airport security program to GSCR. The chairman of the Mines and Energy Committee, Samuel Atacha, responded to concerns of the minority against the relocation of the Ameri plant from Abuazi to Kumasi. Yesterday, it became apparent that the breakdown of what constituted the 35 million was not just the transportation, because a false impression was created as if you have to just ferry it from Western Region to the Asante Region, now it's 35 million. You need to, excuse me to say, dismantle the structure. So the cause of dismantling and how you, you, you take it over, and even to um, do a new space, I mean, for it to be erected and used, all will, will cost that much. But let's see what, how it goes. The Minister for Transport, after a stern warning from the Speaker the last time he failed to show up, today finally was in the chamber to answer a wide range of questions from the safety of sailors to the Magdan aviation troubles at the airport and why the Ghana Meteorological Agency is not even receiving a portion of the aviation fund as stipulated in law. It was in the floor of the House to answer these questions and more. Reporting for City News from Parliament, my name is Duke Mensokoko.